All right, so we finished nailing off all of our rim joists all along the whole perimeter of the building. Again, going about every 16 inches toe nailing. Um, so now we can do two things at the same time. And this is uh, a really good thing that you guys can have volunteers do while you're finishing the framing. AJ here um, is starting to take measurements for blocking. Um, blocking is a solid board that goes in between um, all of these floor joists. If you guys can see, these floor joists kind of deflect a little bit yet. Um, and sometimes they're warped a little bit, sometimes they're not straight. Um, and um, they also, if you're standing on them, they still kind of deflect up and down just a little bit. So one way to kind of solidify that is to put um, blocking in between here. So if you notice, AJ is taking a measurement right along um, the rim joist. Um, if you were to take a measurement um, in the middle here where we're putting the blocking, it may not be exactly accurate because our boards might be twisted. Um, so that's what we're trying to remedy. We don't want to take that measurement um, where they are twisted because the measurement would be off. So if you can see, AJ took a measurement of 14 and a half here on this bay. Here we got 14 and three quarters. So we'd be off that quarter inch if we took this measurement here. If we take all of our measurements that we have along this edge and then put our blocking here in the middle and bring the boards to where they're supposed to be, by the time we're done, our whole floor will be nice and straight and we'll be ready for sheathing. So AJ is gonna finish um, doing those measurements um, and cut those pieces and Azad and I will then um, start with our cripple studs, the last framing member of the floor. So if you guys remember from our layout, we have our rough opening. Um, we can't have a full floor joist coming through here because we have to have this open space. Um, we also have to um, take into account our floor sheathing that's still gonna go on top of this. Um, and we have to ha be able to support that floor sheathing. So what we do is we do what's called a uh, cripple joist or a joist that's just not full length. And we'll put it in here. And if you notice, if we hook on the end, oops, new tape. If we hook on the end here, we're still on our 16 on center layout. Um, so that's really important when we're putting down our floor sheathing. If we have a seam that lands right where one of these cripple joists are, we still have a good nailing surface to nail that um, joist or that sheathing, excuse me. All right, so we'll put both of these guys in. And then for right now, we're just gonna focus on this um, rim joist side. We're gonna go ahead and nail them into place just like we did with the other floor joists. Nice and flush and three nails. Check our line. And then the only difference being, we don't have a layout on this header. So what we're gonna do is take a measurement here we have nine and three eighths. So we're gonna copy that measurement over here. Nine and three eighths. And what I like to do here is just do a toenail through the top. Again, Start up a little high, same concept as our rim joist. And as you nail, it'll come flush. So then we'll do the same thing for this guy. We have 25 and 5 sixteenths. 
25 and 5 16 are straight. Toenail this. All right, nice and flush. We'll just do the same thing on this side. If you notice, I didn't um, finish nailing off um, our cripple joist here. That's gonna be okay, because we're gonna end up putting what's called a joist hanger on here. And this is where all of our support's gonna actually come from. Once we put these guys on, this guy actually gets attached to our header. And then we actually drive two nails on both sides at a basically toenail angle. And that'll um, attach this really, really nicely. If we went and did toenails off right off the bat, we'd have those nails in our way when we're trying to put on our joist hanger. So I like to leave those out of the way. So when we're putting these guys on, we have to do a fastener change here. We're gonna use what's called a joist hanger nail. And we use these guys, they're different than our 16 penny nails, obviously they're not as long, but they um, have a different steel in them and they have a greater shear to them. Shear means when you have this coming through here, there's gonna be a lot of force coming down on this joist hanger. Shear means it's cutting off this nail. If we put a regular 16 penny through here, it doesn't have as big of a shear factor as this uh, joist hanger nail does. So we wanna make sure we're using these joist hanger nails. Um, another good point to make is when we're doing all floor framing, we wanna use these 16 penny nails versus like a uh, three penny screw. It's the same concept that screw has very little shear factor, um, whereas this has a greater shear. All right, so we'll do a little demonstration here to kind of um, tell or demonstrate what we're talking about with shear here. We got a normal drywall screw, we got a 16 penny nail, and we got these joist hanger nails, uh, the ones that we're using for our brackets here um, that have that really high shear. If you go with a um, drywall screw, um, it'll sh we'll show you here that has really um, weak shear. It just breaks right off. Um, if you use a 16 penny nail, it bends over. Um, if you do a little close up here, you can see this nail basically just bent. It didn't break, but it bent. Whereas a joist hanger nail, it just completely went over. It didn't even bend. It has really high shear. So that's why we use these guys um, for our joist hangers. Uh, if we were to use like a screw on a floor, that would be good because screws have good hold down power. They just don't have very good shear power. So we'll save the screws for the flooring. All right, so with these guys here, these joist hangers, a little tip, they have these little nubs on here. What you can actually do is put it in place, put it nice and tight up to here, and then hit that little tab in, and then it'll stick into place for you. Come over here and do the same on this one, and they'll stay for you. So then the uh, rule for these joist hangers is every single nail hole has to be filled. Uh, some of the bigger, like if you're using like two by 12 joists, there's gonna be a lot of nail holes in those joist hangers. Every single one needs to be filled. So we'll go and fill every one with a joist hanger nail. So we got that, and then we're gonna finish this off um, by using these 16 pennies. And they have a nice little guide here for you to start. You just put them in and it'll guide the nail. And you drive it home. Both sides.
All right. So joy snails in the plate, and then 16 pennies where you're gonna tow now. We'll finish off um, the cripple studs on the other side, or cripple joists. These double headers, very same concept. It's just a double wide joist uh, hanger. These guys will go here and on the opposite end, and then we'll be all set with joist hangers. So the, um, you may be wondering why we're not putting these on every single joist. You only need a joist hanger when you don't have anything supporting underneath. So on this exterior, we have a good four inches of mud sill. If you can look down in here, we have good bearing um, on this sill here for this joist to sit. So there's really no need to have extra support holding these joists. So these all look good. They don't need any hangers. This guy doesn't have any support. These two headers don't have any support. So we'll put hangers on those. All right, so we now have all of our cripple joists in and we have our joist hangers in. Um, so AJ took those measurements um, for our blocking. We have a few pieces in here, um, but we're gonna explain how we did this. So basically, um, Whatever the plans call for, sometimes plans just call for one row of blocking. That's what um, our little house here is going to call for. Um, sometimes a wider span will have two or three rows of blocking. Um, wherever that um, row of blocking goes, uh, what you do is snap a line. So our, our row is going right down the middle. We measured in six foot, or excuse me, four foot since our house is eight foot wide. And then we snapped a line from end to end. You can see this line right here. This, um, so basically the reason why we do that is we want our blocking to be right along this line and we want to keep it straight. Um, it doesn't matter um, if they're a little bit off from each other. We actually prefer that. Um, it's called staggered blocking. And the reason why we do that is so we have an area to be able to come in and nail from behind. If we line these guys straight right on that line, you'd have to sit there and toenail and then it gets all crooked and it's just not as easy as doing staggered blocking. So the way to do staggered blocking is snap your line, do one block on this side of the line and then one block on this side of the line and keep going back and forth until you finish the house. Um, so obviously we won't have any in our opening here, um, but we can come over here. AJ has these all pre-cut and we'll come in and place it in here. Now notice, um, notice how this is really loose. We have about a quarter inch of a gap here. Again, that's why we took this measurement from over here. When we nail this together, it's gonna bring this floor joist nice and straight. Right now it's not straight. Um, so what we'll do is we'll nail through the end here. That. Get it straight. Just like our floor dress, we're going to do three nails using 16 pennies. And now you can see AJ brought that joist over. Now we're sitting nice and tight. We'll nail this off. All right, now you can see just adding that one little block, we have less deflection now. After we get all these guys in here, this will be sturdied up quite a bit. All right, now every once in a while, you have a situation where you can't nail like this. This is one of the few rare occasions that it's okay to use a screw. This blocking isn't really uh, structural 
um, up and down. It's just keeping these from moving back and forth. Um, so if we'll take a screw over here. Oh, we've got a gun. Get this in place. Oop. All right. And we'll just run a screw through the back. And that's a good idea so it doesn't twist to maybe do a toenail or toe screw. All right, so now we have our blocking in and we're ready to start our sheathing.